Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different this morning. Uh, we are going to actually be going to work on a friend of mine's excavator. Uh, it's a John Deere 270C. Uh, it's a 2006. He was uh, using it to dig a pond. Uh, he purchased a machine to dig his own pond. And uh, in the process of digging the pond, he was hauling some sand up to the house. Came back, got in the excavator, started loading sand again, and everything just stopped. Thought that he uh, had accidentally pulled up the disarming lever in the cab. That was down, no problems there. So something happened between the engine and the hydraulic pump. So we're gonna load some tools here in my tool truck, some stuff that I don't usually carry. And uh, we're gonna head up to his place and uh, we're going to tear the machine apart and diagnose and see what happened to it and uh, get it fixed up for him so he can finish digging his pond. So uh, no one else wanted to touch this excavator and uh, we will show you why. Uh, he had called a couple different dealerships and they didn't want to mess with it and he said he, said, uh, he decided to call me because he thought well they're like the 18. We'll work on anything. So, uh, no, Wilson, you cannot go with today. Uh, get off the truck. <laughs> so, if you have a problem no one else can help and you can find us, you might be able to hire Dirt Grain Steel, too, to fix something for you. So, we're going to get up there. We're going to take the service truck with the crane for lifting the uh, pump off. Wilson really wants to come. Maybe we should just bring him with. So, let's get up there and get working on it. Okay, so we're gonna head out and go get that pump taken off. I've got the uh, cab over Ford service truck with the Cat V8 engine in it. I hear them ponies under the cab. So uh, anyways, uh, stay tuned because Sunday, uh, something pretty cool is coming to the channel. So uh, I'm gonna make a collaboration video with another famous YouTuber, a lot of you know him. And it's very surprising how everything worked out, just the stars aligned, and uh, he's coming to hang out with me Sunday, and we're going to go look at a piece of equipment that he wants to purchase, so uh, stay tuned and see if you can figure out what YouTuber it is in the comments below. So I'm pretty excited about this. He's another Indiana native, so uh, that'll give you a little bit of a hint. So gonna be a really cool Sunday hopefully everything works out we'll see what happens so let's go get this pump off for Aaron and uh, get him on the road to recovery with his 270 and uh, we'll see what else we get into all right so here we are this is the 270 that we're gonna be taking hydraulic pump off as you can see it's sitting on a pile that's why nobody wants to touch this excavator because it's the liability working up on the pile but we'll get her pulled off so we're going to get some tools out and get started. Okay, so Dad Strength's got the crane in position. We're ready to go. We're going to start taking... Did you say it's all erect? Uh, it's all erect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start taking all our hoses off. And really, Aaron done the easy... Or the hard part, I should say. He got all the tin work off out of the way. So that makes the job so much easier. Um, so all we got to do is get these hoses off. And then we'll unbolt the pump, we'll swing it out, and we'll see what's going on. Well, we've got our electric all taken off. Now, being this is a newer hoe, it's got a quite a bit of electric running to the pump, which that's no big deal, just all plugs in. So now we're going to start on our lines here. So this is our suction from the tank. These two are pressures to our valve body, and then the rest of these are basically all just pilot control lines, because over here is your pilot control pump that supplies your pilot controls with the necessary pressure to open and close the main valves. So I'm going to go ahead, I got to get this elbow taken off here. That'll disconnect the pump from the tank. I've already got these broken loose. <clears throat> so for all those guys that always say that, you know, John Deere built these hoses and whatnot, this is still not a John Deere built hoe. It says Hitachi right there. It's got a John Deere engine and a John Deere paint scheme and that is all that there is that is John Deere to it. The rest of the machine is all Hitachi built in Japan. So 
get this off. There we go. There's an O-ring in there. Got to get this tube off of this steel line. Might have to go get my plastic hammer and tap that off. Dad, will you go grab my plastic hammer out of the side box? Or any hammer you find, I suppose. So we can start taking our lines off here for our pressure. Got to get my tools. So basically, these pumps bolt on these engines just like a transmission would on a truck or a, a well, big truck or a small truck. Some car transmission. So really not much to get them off. That's the hammer I need. Let me have that. Go ahead and see if we can tap this off. It's coming. There it goes. Get a little oil, we'll drain it in a rain gutter that takes it to the barrel. So we'll replace that o ring when we go back together. Try to reseal as much as you possibly can that you disturb. Take that line off. Got these lines off. off the pilot control pump. Okay, so everything's pretty much off the bottom. You've got two hoses that are just there for absorbing shock. They actually deadhead. There's just plugs in the end of them. That's this one and this one on this side. So get them off out of the way too. It really helps to have you a nice silicone Harbor Freight tool tray too. So you can throw all your stuff in it. Keeps it up out of the dirt, especially working outside. They got three sizes and trust me, buy all three sizes. You'll love them. I just figured I'd work from the bottom up here. I know I started up there, but it don't matter. Got a rain gutter over here to catch as much oil as we possibly can. These excavators are full of oil no matter what you do. You're always going to have some that runs out. Okay, we'll come back up here. nice thing about this excavator is a lot of the stuff will only go in one spot so there's not a whole lot of marking you have to do in this general area with zip ties now when you get to the pilot control hoses on a valve body it really helps to have a uh, an assortment of colored zip ties to mark out all your uh, different lines and things and even ear tags for cows are really handy also to have around. I don't want this dirt down in there. I'll have to clean that up real good. Got this one left over here. And then I got, I got two more pilot control lines up on top. That one off. Our main feed lines are off. And I got these two up here. Now, you probably can't see everything I'm doing on the camera. I replaced my camera lens, and for some reason, when I get it in the sun, it's got a glare on it. So, I might have to find a different lens for it. But uh, I think you've seen most of what I did. So, okay, now we'll get the crane in position and uh, we'll get our, you can call them bell bolts, I suppose, out, and our pump should come off. Well, we've got the, the crane in place here. We've got a nylon strap wrapped around it. I got one bolt left. We got some tension on it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this bolt out and hope for the best here. I think we got it balanced out pretty well. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think it'll be all right. We just don't want it falling out on the ground and getting in the sand. So we are tipped back a little, but that, that should be okay. So we're, we're about to find out the moment of truth why... Yep, that's why there's nobody home in there because the coupler is broke. And that is fantastic because this is not a major ordeal. So 
Okay, we'll have dad strength pick it up out of the way and we'll get a better look at it. Well, with the pump out of the way, um, we should have had a little more tension on the strap. It kind of stretched a little bit. The pump was a little heavier than I anticipated, but it's out of the way. Everything's safe. No big deal. So uh, you can see what happened in here is the bolts actually sheared off the hub right here. And they could have broke from vibration. Who knows really what happened. But uh, this all turns, so that's all good. So we'll just have to get that hub off, get the bolts out. And uh, when that all fell apart, the rest of the coupler all fell apart. These are actually supposed to be bolted to that hub. And they sit in here like so with a polyplastic ring with them that actually acts as the coupler and kind of cushions everything. So actually this is a cheap fix. Um, got real lucky on this machine. So uh, we'll be able to get the parts for it and get it back together relatively quickly. Uh, in fact, Westside Tractor might have the parts on hand. So if that's the case, we can get them back digging pretty soon. So we'll clean all this crap out, get them bolts out, be ready to go. So. Uh, this will actually be part two of putting it back together when we do put it back together. So anyways, if you enjoyed this episode of Dirt and Steel, give me a like and a subscribe. I greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.